I got a message from Yvonne who was asking, um, are there any opportunities in Adobe Captivate to use a keyboard key to trigger an action, like simply pressing you know, the button one on a keyboard and have it play certain audio? Well, good news, uh, Yvonne, that's totally something you can do. You still need to use an object that you place on your slide. In this case here, I'm going to use um, a click box, and I'll just show you how you can make that work. Now, normally a click box, by its name, suggests that you know you're going to want to click it, but that's actually only part of what a click box can do. Uh, it just needs to be on your stage, so you can put most of it into the scrap area, as I've done here. And what we're going to do is we're going to change its function a little bit. If this is the first click box you've added to your project, you might see a success, failure, and hint caption. You can turn those off just by unchecking these items here in your properties inspector. So to have this triggered by a keyboard keystroke, you just actually choose a shortcut. So I'm going to select the radio button next to shortcut, and I'm just going to type in uh, one. Now it doesn't differentiate between the numeric keypad. Um, well, actually it might. Let's, let's use the numeric keypad and see if that works for us. And then we can assign whatever action we want. It can be uh, go to next slide. It can be jump to a particular slide. It can be run some uh, advanced actions if you wish. In this case here, I'll go with the uh, suggestion that Yvonne was looking for to play some audio. And that, that's in keeping with of course, this jukebox approach here I've got. So if you want to play a little rock and roll, I've already got some music in my library here. So we're going to play some rock and roll here for that. Now I'm going to duplicate this click box. And again, all I need to do is have it somewhere on the stage. It just needs to overlap a little bit here. I'm going to change the shortcut key to two and then have it play some disco. Perfect. I'll duplicate it once more. And we'll change the shortcut key to three and have it play some hip hop. And I'll duplicate it once more again. And um, we'll change that to four and have it play classical music. Now, the one thing I want to do is I want to keep it on this slide. So I'm going to uncheck continue playing the project for all of these so it stays paused for you. I'm also going to go over to my options tab and check stop slide audio. So if I had some narration on this slide, I could actually have it uh, stop playing that narration, uh, which would be useful, of course, if you uh, don't want it to. Um, play the music over top of uh, the narration voice. So I think we're pretty much good to go here. Let's just do a preview in HTML5 in browser. So here we go, and I'll just hold up my keyboard and show you for real that I'm doing this here. So I'm going to press the one key. Little rock and roll. Let's go to disco. Number three for hip hop. And a little classical. So the advantage of this actually, Yvonne, is that not only do you get to give people keyboard controls, but this is actually ideal for accessibility purposes because there are certain people in the world who can't use a mouse because of maybe a repetitive um, you know, mouse or repetitive injury on their arm or something like that, and maybe they can only use a keyboard. So this is a really good choice for them, and uh, also just another way to make your course interactive. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.